Okay, that is an admittedly provocative title, but I had to name that video this because I, I need this video to be found by people who are thinking of buying an Ender 3 or a Prusa based on the recommendation of somebody else. I mean, I suppose a better title for this should be, here's some things that you should think about before you jump in and buy a 3D printer. And I want to be clear here, I don't get paid to make any of these recommendations. If I try out a 3D printer and it doesn't impress me, I'll let you guys know, trust me. See, a lot of people get into 3D printing, or rather, want to get into 3D printing, but ultimately don't. There's a lot of um, forgotten printers out there. And what happens a lot of times is people get their 3D printer and they open the box and they see it's not a 3D printer. It's a box of parts and they have to put it all together and they go, oh, I guess I'll put it all together when I get a free weekend and they never get a free weekend. Or they do put it together, but they can never quite get it to work or they get it to work kind of, and then something happens and they just give up on it. I can't tell you how many Ender 3s I've encountered in the wild that people are like, oh yeah, it stopped working and all they needed to do was level the darn bed and it worked just fine after that. I mean, all you have to do is search online for how to level an Ender 3 bed and look at how many people are trying to help people do that to see how big a problem this is. And the thing is, Prusas or Ender 3s, these aren't your only options. There's a wide variety of 3D printers out there. 3D printers that you don't even need to level the bed. 3D printers that you don't even need to assemble. Wouldn't you rather have a 3D printer that you spent a little bit more money on and actually used than a 3D printer that you spent money on and aren't using. I mean, if you want to pay money and get nothing in return, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. So why does the Ender 3, and if not the Ender 3, something from Creality, and if not something from Creality, something from Prusa, the most recommended 3D printers out there? Well, I mean, think about who's doing the recommendation. The people who are doing the recommendations started with one of these printers and they managed to make it work. And because they managed to make it work, they have a positive experience and they just want you to have that positive experience. But these people demographically are, well, admittedly, the exact sort of people that make up my YouTube audience. Generally speaking, males, generally speaking, technically savvy, generally speaking white. That's not to say that women and people of color and others couldn't do 3D printing with this technology. There are many, many who do, but the large, the large majority of people who are in this hobby are white males. And I know I don't get to talk. I, I have a mirror. I, I've seen my reflection, okay? But I also feel like for 3D printing to grow, it needs to become more diverse. And for it to become more diverse, it needs to appeal to more people. So let's, let's talk for a second. And to be completely fair, let's start with the Ender 3. Why would you want an Ender 3? And are you one of the people who do? Now, the biggest selling point for the Ender 3 is that it's cheap. It's cheap enough that for a lot of people, it's not even a decision. They look at the price and just open up their wallet. But Ender 3s are project 3D printers. You get them and you have to put them together. Now, admittedly, you don't have to put them together too much. They go together pretty easily, especially compared to earlier 3D printers that came out years ago but you still have to put them together. And once you get them together, it's going to be, it's gonna work, but it's not gonna work super well. And Ender 3s are known for not being super reliable. If you need a 3D printer that you can just get on and use, an Ender 3 might not be the right choice for you because it's gonna break 
just as you're in the middle of doing that big job that you absolutely need to have done. And that can be super frustrating. Now, for some people though, that's what they want. Now, not that they want to be frustrated, but they want a project. And with an Ender 3, you're gonna get that. You're going to have to take it apart and put it back together. You're gonna to learn the ins and the outs of the darn thing. You're probably gonna to need to spend about $100 in upgrades. And when you do, you're going to have an amazing 3D printer that is going to just blow the top off of anything. And, and you're gonna be really, really proud of it, but you spend a lot of time and effort getting there. Now, the other thing that Ender 3s and Creality's have is a fantastic community. You're gonna find friends. If you, if you stick with this 3D printer, when you stick with this 3D printer, you will find other people who also have had it and who have also been frustrated and who have also gotten over it and are willing and ready to help you do it. And that is also a really good feeling. And if all that sounds good to you, an Ender 3 is a great choice. And it's not like the Ender 3 is the only 3D printer that Creality is selling. They've got a wide variety of 3D printers. And if you're still looking for something that's easier to use but still hackable, maybe check out the Ender 5 Plus. It's got a lot of great bells and whistles on it. But what if you would rather have something that, okay, a little bit kiddy, still a little bit something that you you can hack on but that will work when you need it to work well then you're going to have to buy a prusa now prusas are how would i describe a prusa i don't have any prusas i've never used one but it also has a huge community of people who are hacking on it and many of the great advances in 3d printing have happened because prusa users were hacking their machines. But they're also, by reputation I would have to say, but they're fairly reliable and people who use them get stuff done with them. So you kind of have the option with a Prusa. I, I guess that I would describe Prusa as like a bespoke 3D printer. There's a little bit of, of pride and haughtiness in, ooh, I, I have a Prusa. Not, not for everybody, and I, I didn't mean to insult with that, but, but it is. There's a level of pride to, I have a Prusa. I don't have a Prusa, so I don't get to say that. But yeah, it's, it's a good printer. It's a good reputation. It's like the Nike of 3D printers, and if that's what you want, that's a good choice. Okay, but what if those aren't really what you want? What if everything I've said, you're like, yeah, can I just have a 3D printer that just works? I, I would rather spend my weekend making something than making something work once in a while. And yes, there are 3D printers out there that you don't have to fix, that you don't have to hack, that just work straight out of the box. And they're not too expensive. One of my favorite to recommend, and I recommend this to schools, to libraries, to places where you need people to be able to use the 3D printer without having to go through a lot of technical knowledge to do it, is the Flash Forge Adventure 3. By far my favorite 3D printer to recommend. Its build volume is a little bit smaller than the Prusa or the Ender 3, but Honestly, it's big enough to print almost everything that you want. And like I said, you will be printing with this printer. You don't have to assemble it. All you have to do is pull it out of the box and turn it on and you're good to go. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a 3D printer that could theoretically print bigger things, but you're not actually using it or something that will print just about everything that you need and you will use it? That's why I recommend this. And for only $400, it's a good buy. It's a good price. It won't break the bank to do it. It's not as cheap as an Ender 3. It's not as, oh, well, let me just crack open my wallet. But pay that little bit more. You won't ever have to go back for upgrades. It will just work on you for a long time. I like these machines, and, and they're my number one recommendation. I also recommend you check out JG Maker. JG Maker creates a wide array of amazing 3D printers that are easy to use, 
well built, require very little assembly, just, just a little bit, but increase your capability to make and do so with a pretty easy user interface. I say just, just look at what JG Maker offers and check them out. Of course, we are in a super exciting time for 3D printing. I feel like this video is going to be out of date the moment that I publish it. In fact, I just reviewed this Kaiwu 3D 3D printer, and right now it's on Kickstarter. After Kickstarter, it will be, you know, still available. And as far as capability and ease of use for the price, and all those things add up to, to this being a super recommendable 3D printer. Now, they don't have the experience of Creality or Prusa or Flashforge, but it's exciting to me to know that these are options coming up in the future. And if you're willing to take a little bit of risk, this machine will just get you into 3D printing really good. And I think that this represents the future of 3D printing. I'm probably going to have to redo this video next year because there are going to be so many amazing 3D printers. What about resin 3D printers? Yeah, there are 3D printers that use a light curing resin and they make remarkable prints, incredibly high quality 3D prints, 3D prints that blow away anything possible by FDM. Now, I haven't gotten into resin 3D printing yet myself, but that's because I worry. But yeah, that's the reality of resin 3D printing, that the uncured resin before it turns into a solid is really not very good for you. And so you need to make sure that you're careful. So there you go. Sure, an Ender 3 or a Prusa might actually be the right choice for you, but I just want you to be aware of the many options that are out there and be aware of, of what the future holds if you choose one of these two options or if you choose one of the alternatives. And if you're the sort of person that gets asked what 3D printer do you recommend? I hope that this video has also opened your eyes to, to look around, see what else is available, and think about the person who you're asking, because I love 3D printing. I want more people to get into it, and that means that there's gonna to have to be people getting into it who are not like me. And if they're not like me, that means that they don't need the recommendation that worked for me, they need a recommendation that's gonna work for them. So always be looking for that option, that recommendation. And you know, honestly, if you don't have it, tell them to check me out. I will always be looking for that as well and trying to report it to you. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. <laughs>